guys, so today I'm going to be going over how to achieve the pristine white background. I did a brief tutorial on the website, styletomes.com, just going over it, but I thought it would be handy to have a video to go along with it and show you a step-by-step. -step. I used to set up a whole studio with lights, making sure there are no shadows, uh, everything had to be perfect in order to just get one shot with a pure white background. I found that was way too time consuming and this method actually works much quicker. So at this point, I don't bother with a studio lights or setting up the studio. I just get a white sheet, drop all my things on it, get next to a window, take my shot, and this takes me five minutes. I clean it, clean it up really quickly. I'll show you what I'm starting with. So this is actually how I placed everything next to a window, just make sure you have natural light. And we'll be starting off with one of the shots, this one. I found that I could use anything, but I just like the composition of this one and I like the fact that I had a lot of space around it so I could crop it out how I want it. I decreased the contrast, first of all. The contrast was at zero, you can see the shadows are significantly darker and uh, you lose a level of detail there. So I decreased the contrast. I really wasn't paying attention to any of the camera settings. So this is really a quick and easy surefire approach to get that perfect flat lay shot. I played around with the highlights, with the shadows and the whites and blacks a little bit just to pump up the details of the shot. Let me close this. This is what it will end up looking like. And I'm going to open up this shot, which I already played around with in Lightroom, in Photoshop. So we're going to edit. Bear with me. All right. Let me Actually, let me start off here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it. I don't need all the extra white space. It's just nice to have just to position the shot. Uh, if you play with the rule of thirds, you can kind of see, you know, where you want to place your intersection. So let's say on this purse right here. So I'm going to place that like this. And that is now my shot. Not very pretty. I am going to start off with the dodge tool. So my exposure is set at 100. You can actually set it a little lower. It's at mid-tones. And I'm going to just go around, this actually shouldn't be too bad, but I'm going to go around the corners over here just to get rid of any vignetting from the lens. So see how it brightens it up. So I'm just gonna brighten it up just slightly. Uh, that corner is pretty bright over here, and I'll just brighten this, and we're good to go. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new group. You can create a new group, right? Uh, well, actually, let me go back. You're going to click Select Color Range. Let's start off there. So you're going to click select color range. This is actually already pre-selected at 161, but as you can see over here, there's some darks. Just click anywhere and that will select your white. So click on the white background and start playing around with it. I can see that there's some darkness over here that's going to be hard to get rid of. So I'm gonna go back with my dodge tool and I'm just gonna brighten this corner up a little bit more. I'm gonna go back color range. All right, that's looking better. So as you can see, if you go down, it becomes dark. That means these dark areas will not be selected. You want to select all the white. So keep on pushing it until it's all the white is completely selected and the darks are left alone. So the dark will be your subject matter. So right here is the sweet spot. And around 161 like it was. I can see over here the corner is going to have some trouble. That's okay. We can fix it up later. Oh, it got selected. It's fine. Okay, so next step. You have all of your white selected. Don't worry about the shadows over here. 
uh, that's going to, you know, um, if you if you really want the shadows to be gone, we can tackle it in another uh, tutorial. But I find that the shadows are completely fine in this and you'll still get the effect that you're going for. So you're now going to create a new group. So right here is the new group icon. Click that. And you're going to create a mask on top of that group. So click that. Next, you're going to hover over the group mask that you just created, hold down Alt and click it. It's going to take you into a black and white. So we're going to go to our brush tool. And here you're going to play around with it based on how big your image is. So I'm going to make this about that size. My hardness is going to be zero. My mode is going to be overlay. Make sure to set it on overlay. Opacity 100, flow 100. And I am going with the group mask selected. I am going to start going over the black, the subject of the image. Make sure that your uh, that your brush is also set on black. So let me go over all of the subject in an image right now. Go over all of the edges. It'll keep the integrity of your subject in the photo and um, it will look nice and crisp. Next, we're going to create a new layer within that group. So we're going back to our original image. We're going to go into Edit and Fill. You're going to select White, 100% Opacity, Mode Normal, click OK, and there we go, nice and crisp. All of these blemishes, all the creases of my backdrop are gone. It doesn't have that yellow tinge anymore. It looks like it was a pristine product shot. And now what you can do is you can click Command Shift E to combine the layers together. So I have things like this. This is where you can go in and um, fix up the photo as you see fit. So I would do something like this. if. I really want it to go the extra mile. It really doesn't matter to me, but we'll do it anyway. So something like this, and there we go. We fix that up. And you can now also go into adjustments and curves, play around with the curves if you know how to, in order to uh, increase the contrast and get the image to where you want it to be. This is your final shot.